Number 22, calculate the standard cell potential for each reaction below and note whether the reaction is spontaneous under standard state conditions. Then we have the equation 3Cu2 plus plus 2Al solid yields 2Al3 plus plus 3Cu solid. Now we want to find out that standard cell potential. That's an E cell. So I'm looking for an E cell. Specifically, it's like an E notch cell uh, because the notch represents that we are under standard conditions and that's what they ask for, the standard cell potential. Now cell potentials only go with oxidation reduction reactions or redox reactions. So there has to be some change in oxidation states between the elements. And I can clearly see that right off the bat. I see some charges here. I got a two plus, I got a three plus. I have no charges for some of them. So there is going to be a little bit of a difference here. That's an oxidation reduction reaction. So let's just uh, get these pairs going, right? Copper with a two plus is now going to a copper that's just chilling, right? So maybe I'll hook that up. And if we notice, I have a two plus here and it's going to a copper that has no charge in the upper right hand corner. Remember that always means that you have a zero charge. And now if I hook up the aluminums, it's kind of the opposite, right? I'm starting off with a aluminum that has no charge. And then I'm going to an aluminum that has a three plus charge. Okay. So I'm going from a zero to a plus three. Now notice how I don't even care about how many I have. I don't care that I have three copper. I don't care that I have two aluminum, two aluminum here, or three copper. The coefficients mean nothing when we're dealing with standard cell potentials. But now where do I go with this information? What is the formula to find a E cell? Well, good question. I've been dying to know too. The formula is this. E cell always equals the cell potential of the cathode minus the cell potential of the anode. Easierly, we can say cathode minus anode, cathode minus anode, cathode minus anode, right? So now we just have to find out, well, which one is the cathode and which one is the anode, right? Was the copper the cathode or was the aluminum the cathode? Remember, reduction always happens at the cathode and that's when you gain electrons, you become more negative. Anode is oxidation, and you lose electrons, you become more positive. So we already did the hard part. We already took that charge difference. Now we just have to go back and say, okay, for the copper, I went from a plus two to a zero. Is that becoming more positive or more negative? It's becoming more negative. And if it's becoming more negative, that's the cathode. So I know that the Cu is going to be at the cathode value. That should mean that the anode is aluminum, but let's just make sure. We said that it was zero to a plus three. That's more positive, and that's at the anode. So it checks out. But now where are we going to get these values? Well, that's where the back of the textbook comes in. I went to the back of the textbook to find the half reactions that go along with the correct charges I picked the correct charges that they were talking about. So just make sure that you pick the right half reaction. And here are their corresponding E values. Now I just want to make a point here that if you're using cathode minus anode, cathode minus anode, you do not have to change these E values. If some teachers like to use cathode plus uh, anode and then you have to change one of them, I don't like to do that. The negative makes the change. So I'm sticking with it. E cell equals the cathode value, the copper one is 0 0.34 volts minus the anode value, which is a negative 1.662. Plug that into calci and let's go get your calcis out. 0 0.34 minus a negative 1.662. And all the math looks good. So we got a two point and technically I can only go out to the hundredths place here. So it's going to be 2.00 volts. And that is your standard cell potential. Now I just have to say, well, is it spontaneous or not? 
Well, that all comes down to knowing the charge of the E-cell. If your E-cell is a positive value, greater than zero, it's uh, spontaneous, and I don't know what just happened to this. It went bye-bye. And then if your E-cell is a negative value, it's less than zero, it's non-spontaneous. But here, two is clearly a positive value, so this reaction is spontaneous. It's going to run without the use of any additional energy. And that is it. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Love chatting with you guys. And if you wouldn't mind, please tell your classmates, your friends, your teacher or professor about this channel. Just gets the word out there that this channel exists. Um, thank you so much. I hope you're having a great day. Keep studying hard. And I'll see you in the next lesson. Okay, bye-bye.